all you mommies to be if you are watching this video you are probably somewhere around the seventh week of your pregnancy and whether this be your first pregnancy or your fifth you probably have a lot of questions and we're going to talk about those kinds of questions in this video right now My name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant specializing in women's health and gynecology. I'm a mommy to three, and like you, I have one on the way. You are watching In the Pink, and if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirits. So if you like being healthy and happy, click the subscribe button and the notification bell because you are in the right place. So in this video, I am going to talk about your baby's development, what changes your body is going through, what you might be feeling like, what to expect at your next doctor's appointment. I'm also going to talk about what helps you to be more comfortable, general do's and don'ts of pregnancy. Basically, anything that you need to be thinking about right now, we're going to talk about right now. So stick around. You won't want to miss this. So at seven weeks, you're about three quarters of the way through your second month. So you have 33 more weeks to go. Your baby is about a quarter of an inch, about the size of a blueberry. Now that might sound small, but it's actually 10 thousand times bigger than it was just one month ago. By now, your baby has developed something that looks like webbed hands and feet, but they will separate out soon. He also is starting to develop arms and legs. He has kidneys and started to form a mouth and a tongue. The brain is developing rapidly, about 100 new brain cells every minute. On ultrasound, you'll see what is called a gestational sac, and inside that, you'll see your little peanut. You'll be able to see the head and the body. It might be difficult to see the arm and leg buds, even though they are developing. Sometimes, you can see the yolk sac as well. This is what feeds the baby until your placenta has fully developed. You will also be able to see the heart beating. On the ultrasound, it looks like a little fast flicker on the screen. For you, you're going to be noticing some changes too. For many, nausea and sometimes vomiting will start to set in. For some, it's just a nagging feeling or an upset stomach, but for others, it can be like waves of nausea and throwing up. Keep a cracker on hand, or you can use peppermint candy or peppermint tea. This really helps to ease the queeze. But if you want a more in-depth video on how to help with morning sickness, I did a video all about what to do to help with morning sickness. I'll put it in a card above here, and I'll put that also in the video description. You might notice a feeling of what's called aversion to certain types of food. Even foods you used to love may send you to the bathroom to throw up. Best advice that I can give to you is to keep away from those foods. With my first pregnancy, I could not stand the smell of cooking butter. This meant no cookies or pancakes or like fried eggs or anything like that. For like nine months. So just adjust your cooking to accommodate what you are feeling. Also, you know what? If you're having your cravings, whatever it may be, feel okay about uh, satisfying those cravings unless it is a terribly unhealthy thing most of the time it's not some people just might think that it's a little bit weird seriously that's good you might also notice that you have to urinate more often now this is due to an increased amount of blood supply in the pelvic area you might have to get up a few times during the night to urinate as well this is totally normal unless you notice that it hurts when you pee if it burns every time you urinate that might mean that you have a urinary traction and in that case i recommend you go talk to your ob you might need to get on some antibiotics Otherwise, just be sure to be drinking a lot of water because you and your growing baby really both need it. But I do recommend that you cut back on coffee. It's not that bad for you in moderation, but the caffeine in it acts as a diuretic and that makes you have to pee more often. You might also notice some cramping from time to time and this is normal as long as it's mild and you aren't bleeding. If you have bleeding and cramping, you should definitely call your OB. You will also slowly notice some weight gain. Normal weight gain for the first trimester is around two to four pounds. But at seven weeks, most women haven't gained any weight yet and actually some women lose a little weight due to morning sickness. Don't worry too much about this unless you're having really extreme weight changes. The key is to just eat a healthy diet and exercise. So when you exercise, you want to make sure that you don't get so out of breath that you can't carry on a conversation with somebody else. You also want to avoid heavy lifting, but if you're already doing heavy weight lifting, talk to your doctor about safety restrictions you should take due to your pregnancy. Due to the pregnancy hormones, your ligaments are a little bit looser in preparation for the delivery, and you definitely need to take some precautions so that you can avoid injury. Oh, okay. 
So most OBs will want to see you around six to eight weeks. So if you haven't called your OB yet, it's time to get on the phone and make your first appointment. At your OB appointment, your doctor is going to ask you a bunch of questions all about your past medical history. They're also going to ask you about your past surgeries, any medications you might be taking, and also your family history. Also, if you haven't had one in a while, they'll probably collect a pap test. They will also want to get some lab work drawn. These are called your prenatal labs. They are looking at your blood count, looking at your liver and kidney functions, your electrolytes. Um, they also check for any STIs or sexually transmitted infections, and they usually check a urine test for infection. They'll probably go over things that you should and shouldn't do while you're pregnant. So I'm going to go over that right now. But remember, these are general guidelines and you should be sure to do whatever your OB tells you to do. So first off, you want to eat a well-balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables. And you should be eating fish at least or at least fish supplements, but avoid shark, swordfish, and tuna fish. Don't drink any unpasteurized dairy or foods or raw or undercooked meats. If you have a cat, you need to let somebody else change the kitty litter. Cat poop can have a parasite that causes something called toxoplasmosis, and this is a rare infection, but it really could hurt your baby, so you don't wanna be in contact with that. A lot of women wonder if they can exercise, and I know we talked about this a little bit, but I definitely want to answer this. So yes, you can and you should continue to exercise, but like I said, if you're doing aerobic exercises, don't get so winded that you can't carry on a conversation comfortably. So you can travel by car and by airplane all the way up to about 36 weeks, unless your doctor says otherwise. When you're traveling, be sure to get up and walk around every hour to keep the circulation moving in your legs to help avoid blood clots. If you do travel, avoid traveling to areas that are at risk for Zika virus. The Zika virus is known to cause birth defects. As far as sex goes, totally fine. Unless something is going on during your pregnancy where your OB specifies otherwise. They might ask you to abstain if you're having bleeding or preterm labor, for example. Don't drink alcohol. Fetal alcohol syndrome is a real thing. And also, no tobacco or drugs. If you are struggling with these type of addictions, there is help. So talk to your doctor about resources to help you with quitting, please. Now there are over-the-counter medications that you can take. And that really is a video all in itself. So click subscribe and watch for that upcoming video. But the most frequent question I get is pain relievers. So you can safely take Tylenol, but I want you to avoid NSAIDs like ibuprofen, or the brand name is Motrin, or naproxen, which is also called Aleve. If you somehow injure your abdomen, like you fall or you get into a car accident, be sure to call your OB. And if it's a severe injury, of course, go to the ER. In a car, do wear your seatbelt, but you'll want to wear the lap band low at your pelvis, not over your abdomen. In general, if you have any swelling in one leg, shortness of breath, severe pain or bleeding, make sure you call your OB. I have a video that goes into more depth about the do's and don'ts of pregnancy. I'll link to that in a card above here that will give you even more information about this topic. So click on that and check that out. You will also start to notice that your breasts are getting bigger. And for some reason, this causes tenderness. It might cause tingling or achiness. The pregnancy hormones, estrogen and progesterone cause your breasts to enlarge. Fat also builds up in there, and there's an increased amount of blood supply. This is to try to get your breast ready for breastfeeding. The dark part around your nipple, called the areola, starts to get darker too. Your nipples also become more tender. This leads me to our tip of the week. First, to review my previous tips, just make sure you take your prenatal vitamins, drink lots of water, and be sure to get fiber in your diet so you don't get constipated. Tips for this week. Now is the time to invest in a supportive bra that you can use during your pregnancy. While your tummy isn't visibly bigger yet, your breasts definitely are. Trying to make do with the bra that you wore before you're pregnant will not work. You need one that's gonna be supporting your new fuller size. Trust me on this. There's enough about pregnancy that's uncomfortable. The wrong bra size doesn't have to be one of them. Don't forget to get more supportive sports bras for when you are working out too. I'll link to a few good ones in the description. Definitely go check them out. If you haven't seen week six video, I talk a lot about what your first OB appointment and ultrasound is gonna be like. Be sure to check that out as well. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when each upcoming week comes out. Next week is week eight, and I'll be talking about how to help with morning sickness. Watch for that video, and I will see you in the next video.